Heat and DSM-5, we come to the third episode of this series. What we'll do is, instead of taking one chapter at a time, we will take multiple chapters and finish this series quickly. And then, take up real cases of how to apply. Those discussions, of course, we can't record or put on YouTube. But we'll move from these outlines quickly to real life application in supervision. So, let us go in the third episode. In the second episode, we saw how the heat system can be applied to schizophrenia and psychotic disorders. We took up an example of schizophrenia, delusion of persecution. Today, we will see how the heat system can be applied to five chapters of DSM-5. We'll do it quickly and spare the details for real life cases. As we have seen, this is the system of heat, five-step process. This is the case history, the tests. Here we'll be using Apart from these three, we'll be using different tests here. So 2.1 will undergo a change. We'll be using uh, the depression inventory, the anxiety inventory, the bipolar inventory, the OCD questionnaires, the disassociative and the somatic disorder questionnaires. So in these five areas, need specialized tests, each of them. So depression has its own battery of tests. We can start with a general screening test and then go into detailed test or we can directly go to an advanced level. Same with anxiety, same with bipolar, same with OCD. So each of them has a different set of instruments to test. So this will undergo a change. We won't be using Rosha. These two can be used along with the specialized questionnaires to see not only whether there is depression or no depression, but also its intensity. And if there are subgroups within any disorder, then what is the subgroup the person belongs to within that broad disorder? <laughs> These are not relevant here. This, of course, will be used. We come to the pathogenesis. And all of these are very useful. The standard process we have seen last time. Now coming to the application of general event causation. In all of this, the laws of nature and the free will of others and karma, the first three are the core. They will be operative in practically all of this. Bipolar, depression, anxiety, OCD, disassociation, somatization, in all of them, the first three 
the first three, three, 2.1, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, they will be the code. Here it will differ. In some cases, we will have to go by the hydraulic model. In some cases, it will be the non-hydraulic model. The hydraulic model when we use the Freudian model, the ISTDP model can easily be applied. When it comes to climb, occasionally the hydraulic model can be applied. But often we will go into the object relations. When we come to the Tantra psychology, the whole element of chakras, nadis, blockages, depletion of the chakra, rebirth and so on, reincarnation, the evolution of the soul, all those factors come. And when we look at heat, we talk in terms of the elementals. And this is common for all the five pathologies. Take for example, if you take bipolar, the Freudian explanation will be essentially based upon the depression blocking effect and when the effect is released, getting into mania. It will also be based upon the dream and reality becoming one, resulting in a mania. In Kleinian terms, it will be termed as the loss of the omnipotent good object or the gain of the omnipotent object. If we take anxiety, the Freudian explanation will be the degeneration of libido or the fear of castration or it will be the the fear of survival and pain or the fear of one's own death instinct. In Kleinian terms, it will be a response to the attack of the bad breast. In Jungian terms, it will be the response to the overactive predator archetype. In coercion terms, it will be the disintegration of a fragile ego where cohesiveness is a problem. So, for each of the pathology, different explanations will come from different schools and based upon the case history and judgment, we will have to settle for any particular type, any particular causality that appears to fit in the best. So, the case history often tells us whether we are dealing with a Freudian causality or a Kleinian causality or both of them. As we go into therapy, would this not change? Many times it does, many times it does not. Then once we decide upon, say if we look at the Kleinian explanation of bipolar, of gain and loss of the good object. Then if we take up the manic part, the gain of the omnipotent all good object, and suddenly the mania ensues. So when that happens, we can go into the intra-process analysis and we follow this process as we did it last time for Hilt. Coming to the next part of Hilt, the elementals. In general, in all pathologies, fundamental elementals, motivational process, faculty will always be involved. 
the resultant also always will be n v primal. So 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, they will always be involved. So this is a list which in every pathology will be involved. So now let us look at disorder by disorder. The karmic component will be involved practically in all chronic difficulties. Yin and Yang will be involved, let us say, in bipolar, Yin and Yang is involved. Depression, not necessary. Anxiety, it may be if it involves sexuality. OCD, yes. Often it is, it involves sexuality in some way. Trauma depends if the trauma relates to sexuality or gender, then yin and yang is involved or else not involved. Disassociation, yin and yang can be there if there is disassociation because of something sexual or gender oriented. Somatic disorders can be, may not be. Five bodies always will be involved practically in all pathologies. Some chakra will always be involved. So in one sense, all of them, functional elements, fundamental elements also, in some way or the other, in most pathologies, most of them will be involved. And if we look at this, the ego, super ego, let us look at where super ego is very important. In bipolar, we find often very strong guilt, so very strong super ego is there. Depression, often very high guilt, very high superego. Anxiety, yes, it may be, may not be. OCD, yes, very high superego, very high guilt. Trauma depends if it's superego pathology or superego involving pathology. This association may be, may not be. Somatic disorders often involves, by and large, it involves some sort of guilt in operation somewhere. At least at the stage where the effect is not expressed because of either reality or morality, and often morality is involved. In five bodies, most of the pathology will be rooted in the emotional body. I located in the emotional body primarily with roots in, of course, with branches in all other bodies. And the conceptual roots, the cognitive roots will be located, will be coming from the hot body. Fear, anger, sexuality will be involved very pervasively. Evolution, closure, completeness, fulfillment will be involved very rarely. Inertia only in a very few cases. Aesthetics in a very few cases. So we will see 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, Four point five, most common. Four point six and four point eighteen occasionally. Rest of them very rarely. So if we go to each of the chapters in terms of effect. This will involve aggression, 
in the lower cycle. Shame after the upper cycle, more often than not. This will involve anger, sadness, and guilt. This will involve more often than not anger, sadness, and guilt, which is covered up by anxiety, when it signals anxiety and not catastrophic. This will involve anxiety and guilt. This will involve more often than not anger, sadness, often with guilt and shame. This of course involves sadness, guilt or shame. And this involves usually anger, sadness, some sort of guilt and slight amount of shame. In some cases very high shame, but mostly small amount of shame. Coming to process elementals, from 1 to 18, everything will be involved in all pathologies. Unless there is a pathology which is primarily and substantially only a cognitive pathology, not involving so much of affect. So, the chapters that we are dealing with, they will all involve a lot of effect. And so every process, every elemental will be involved 0.4.1 to 4.2. And usually the case will be that the excess pathological effect, effect which remains after the generated effect has been worked upon by defenses and this remains unmanaged. This is what will lead to symptoms. They will be involved in every pathology, even in the healing of pathology. They will also be involved because unless the negativity is not high, the rest of the things will not happen. So they will always be involved by their presence or absence. Six point one, six point two, six point three, six point four are very common. Six point five, six point six, six point five is rare. Six point six is semi rare, frequent but not common, occasional. Six point seven is universal, always available. So six point one, six point two, six point three, six point seven. 6.9, they will be involved in practically every disorder. 6.10, where superego pathology is involved, or a strong superego is involved. 6.12, when we are looking at more of Pohushian fame shame continuum. This is the leftover, the remnant post the symptom manifesting itself or post trauma, the schema which is created. One of the very important elements is the tragic holding state. This is a state where You are heavily influenced by the, by the symptom, but you also realize that you have lived the symptom for a long time. So in a way, there is a security of living with the symptom that you have survived for such long. 
and then there is this falling into a comfort zone and normalizing the pathology and accepting the pathological quality of life as it is. So this tragic holding state is very important element from this whole of it. Two important two elements are very important. Three schema complexes and tragic holding state. The tragic holding state is very important in all the chronic situations where after a long time of suffering, somebody has accepted the pathological as acceptable and normal. Eight point one is something we try to develop and strengthen. Eight point two we might find easily or we may have to really work very long to develop. 8.3, 8.4 are rare. 8.5 is something we look at as a one of the goals to cultivate. Eight So we combine all of it to come to pathogenesis and based upon it, a treatment plan. Difficulties that we have listed out in all, if we divide intensity into mild, moderate and severe, in all moderate to severe cases, the medication, allopathic medication is called for. Taken usually. Some people go for homeopathy in moderate, moderate range. In acute range, people usually go for allopathy. They don't think there is an option. And then psychotherapy is a very important component along with medication. So, in all moderate to severe cases 4.1 and 4.2 they are very important rest of them are secondary The therapy in all of them, let's go back to each of them. Mm -hmm. 
in case of bipolar one of the most important parts is to have a full acceptance of it and get in touch with depressed affect same with depression very high repressed affect in anxiety one has to be clear whether we are dealing with catastrophic anxiety or signal anxiety and if it is signal anxiety then catharsis if it's catastrophic anxiety then a much longer route of self retraining observation understanding if you are looking at ocd then one has to take the ocean stance and the freudian concept to go forward in trauma it is largely about safety safety is also equally important in bipolar and obsessive anxiety of course in trauma it is a slow process of catharsis of accepting the effect which is there accepting what has happened in dissociation there is a large problem of acceptance and integration in somatic disorders it is seeing clearly the cost of not feeling something and pushing it into the body and it's not easy in the somatic disorders to really make the person feel the effect the effect will be so difficult or so severely repressed or so early in life that it may not be easy for the person and the therapist to together to really bring out the effect in catharsis so this is very important in all the pathologies we have listed out safety and self expression the core focus has to be here if this is established and this is done rest of it is much easier then the problem will come only at 5.4 where large volume of affect is to be missed so 5.1 if well done 5.4 will be slightly easier 2 and 3 will not be much of a problem 5 also will not be much if one has time and if a person is ready for long term therapy and if one is interested in self knowing in a socratic way as much as self healing and one is knowledgeable about the psychoanalytic area or if somebody is undergoing a psychoanalytic training psycho training analysis then 5.1.6 can be attempted sorry 5.1.5 you can really go to the depth of it and use it completely so it will start from articulation of conscious desires free association and the free association will go to the extent where the expression may become psychotic first the desire, psychotic desires will come out and then the expression may become psychotic mostly people fear this they feel when sliding into psychosis and it's a real fear but if the ego strength is good enough this can be done completely or you can do it partially but either way is very profitable to do and one unsaid thing is the internalization of peace and silence consciously internalization of when one is conscious and aware and there is peace and silence and one internalizes it and especially in the presence of the other this also is a very precious thing we don't value it enough usually
This has to be brought in cost benefit analysis in 10 different ways so that it does not become monotonous and irritating and this and ineffectual. In different language, in different ways, this has to be brought in. It's very positive, very valuable and effectual. In five body work, the primary work is on emotional body, second on thought body, third on the karmic body. Do it yourself is a delicate area. In CBT, it is believed that if you don't do the do it yourself part, you are not really serious. But some are actually too sick to be serious. So it's a delicate area. Many clients may not be able to. Large scale effect release techniques. ISTGP is very common. EDT is palatable to many who don't find ISTGP to be palatable. Some group meditation workshops also work if you want to do mild or mild to moderate group. Or some the concretization in psychodrama may work. May work. Or some something esoteric like Avishkar a technique in Tantra that may work. And then consolidation is very important before the termination of therapy. Three referential material, we have seen it before. The generic epistemological process, the fundamental epistemological elements, and the heat essential effect system. And from where the holistic, the heat, the holistic healing basket from which we create customized holistic healing solutions. Thank you.